Quarry here again, coming through to you live. Well, not really. This is recorded. This is not a live version. I'm alive right now. Oh, okay. Now, where are we? Oh my goodness, we're already at lesson 4.7. This is absolutely insane. We're cruising through chapter 4. A brand new topic called divide using repeated subtraction. Now, if you recall, we just did the previous lesson, and it was about dividing kind of using the distributive property. So now this one's going to go into repeated subtraction. One thinks of, yeah, it kind of keeps repeating. Yeah, you know, it keeps following the same similar pattern. The essential question, this is our learning target, my friends, our learning intention, our objective. How can you use repeated subtraction and multiples to find quotients. Okay, so it's still about finding quotients like what we did in the previous lesson because we're focusing in on division. But we have two things that we're going to use repeated subtraction and multiples. Okay, it's really important that we understand what we are to learn. Oh, do you like that? It was like, make it sound so serious. Like a really dra like a drama movie. <gasps> like when one cries really bad. But let's emphasize it's what our focus is. Okay. Seriously, Mr. Wara? Yes, seriously. Let's go ahead and get started. We have an investigate. That's right. Purple hands. Hi, purple hands. Wave. Wave. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Now, we are going to be doing an investigate, which means we're going to probably be using some materials. And you can see the materials listed here are counters and grid paper. Ooh, that means I'm going to have to get some counters myself. Cool. My virtual ones, of course. Now, the problem says John is building a backyard pizza oven with an arch opening it says he has 72 bricks he will place six bricks at a time as he builds the oven if he arranges the bricks in piles of six how many piles will he have Woo! what a question yes very interesting it says that you can use repeated subtraction to divide 72 divided by six okay and just going back to the problem they've already kind of told us here we're kind of following the steps that go math sets out for us which they're very helpful thinking that problem we have our dividend as you can see of 72 so there's our 72 bricks these terms are constantly used we want to make sure that we understand them the dividend again is that number that we're trying to divide it's the it's it's like the whole part that we want to divide into equal groups he's going to play six bricks at a time and the reason why it's going to be six is because he decided. Remember, we had that partitive division and measurement division. It's just, it's division. But the question here is, we're not trying to look for partitive division. We're looking for measurement because what we're trying to find out is how many groups, how many piles, okay? How many piles will he have? Six is going to be in each pile, okay? Just a reminder. Okay, cool. Oh, and by the way, that yes, the six bricks here, we didn't finish here, but he will play six bricks. So then this here, right here, is our divisor okay and we're, so we're trying to find the quotient because the dividend divided by the divisor equals quotient oh, don't you just love how i fit that in there Woohoo! hey hey i guess this is john right here too hey let's put his let's give him a name tag yeah okay sure actually you know what? this might not be john he has counters he might just be another kid let's just pretend his name is john we'll put j here we go j hey john how's it going buddy pretty good cool yeah Oh, yeah, Mr. Wara. I'm sorry. I really kind of couldn't help myself. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. Get serious. All right, so begin with 72 counters. Okay. Subtract six counters. Okay. How many are left? Okay. So, oh, my goodness. Seven, he's, yeah, it looks like that John there uh, looks like he has 72 counters. So, hmm, I guess I'll have to get some counters, too. Okay. So, I think rather than getting all those counters, 72 of them, oh, my goodness, that's a lot. I'm just going to go ahead, and I can see down below they have a little table there. So, 72, and we're going to take six away because we're subtracting. Of course, I'm going to need to regroup here. You guys are probably familiar with. And now I'm ending up with looks like 66 so i'm gonna have 66 left over all right now it says record the subtraction on grid paper as shown okay grid paper here we go record the number of counters left and the number of times you subtracted all right so we already know now we have an answer of 66 we did we subtracted one time of course this is going to be two times so we're going to subtract another six here so i can just use my grid paper look at i end up with 60 hmm, pretty easy now i'm going to go ahead and do it another time okay i've done it i have done it twice this is going to bring me to 54 we subtract oh i need to regroup here we go 454 now the question is can you reach zero 
evenly. Okay, like without a remainder. And then it says explain. Well, of course I can. Well, actually, I say we can because I happen to know that 54 is divisible by 6 because 6 times 9 equals 54. Okay, one of our basic facts. So, of course, I'm going to say yes. And why? Well, I know this because I told you that 6 times 9 is 54. So, how many more groups I'm going to need to do? Well, I've already done it three times here. So, since I brought it down to 54 and I was able to subtract 6 from 72 three times and then I'll be doing it 9 more times, then you can see that that's going to be 12 because 9 plus 3 equals 12. And also because 12 times 6, because that's what we were subtracting, is equal to 72, which was our starting number. Yeah. Okay. So I would say yes. I would say because 12 groups of the 6 through 72. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, looky D says count the number of times you subtracted six counters. Okay. Well, we didn't go through the whole thing, but it would have been, yes, 12 times. We did three plus another nine more would equal 12. So there are 12 piles of six bricks. Oh my goodness. Easy. Come on, cave people. Let us do a lesson for you guys. Because we know you can get it. That's right. Now, moving on. Now it says draw conclusions. Explain the relationship between the divisor, the dividend, the quotient, and the number of times you subtracted the divisor from the dividend. Woo-wee. Whoa, what a question or a statement. To actually explain the relationship between those three, we, we do explain the relationship. That doesn't sound too difficult. But and the number of times you subtracted the divisor from the dividend. Well, what did we do? We, uh, well, we, in relation to the divisor, the dividend and the quotient, and the number of times you subtracted. Well, we're subtracting. We subtracted, subtracted the divisor. Oh, no, I don't know how to spell. Not this. No. There we go. Much nicer. We subtracted the divisor, which, which remember, our problem was six. Okay. From the dividend. From the dividend. I don't know how much I'm going to have here. Trying to save some room. Okay. From the dividend, which in this case was 72. Just so you were using the numbers. Uh, we subtracted the divisor. Six from the dividend. As many times, really. As many times as we could. As many times as we could. Oh, get in there. Ha ha. Hee hee. Ho ho. That fit right in there. Okay. As many times as we could. The number of times. The number of times. We did this. We did this. And I'm referring to the subtraction. Is called the quotient. Oh my goodness, I'm going way over here. All right, I did my best. It says, what happens if you subtract multiples of six? Complete the example at the right. Okay, now we have this whole new word, multiples. I think we covered that one. Well, yes, we did. I think in a few lessons ago. And this is, what multiples of six did you use? How did you use them? Okay, multiples of six. Well, six, yeah, because six times 10, kind of already telling us, 10 times six is 60. So 10 times six is 60, okay. And of course, if we subtract, we're going to get with 2 and get 12. Okay, cool. But you can see the remainder here. It's still it's larger than a divisor. So it looks like we could take out 2 because 2 times 6 is 12. So we're going to say 2 more times. So this is almost like saying 10 times we were able to subtract like to 60. And then another 2 times of 6 we were able to subtract. So here we're going to have 12. And of course, here we have 0 because there's nothing left there. And so... How many times do we have? Yeah, we have 10 times to do. We have a total of 12 times. So I'm going to say first, I subtracted, subtracted our 10 times 6, which is equal to 60. Subtracted that from 72. Okay. Then I subtracted, subtracted 2 times 6 equals 12 uh, from, from the remaining, from the remaining 12. Yeah. Woohoo! Are you not entertained? Yay, yeah, I'm sorry. Famous line from a movie. I had to say it. <laughs> so, I think that I answered the question. How did you use them? I kind of said that, I think. I think that covers it. What numbers did you add? Why? Oh, okay. We added how many times? So we added the 10 times, and then we added the 2 times. We used 10 and 2. Those are the ones that we added. 10 and 2, because these numbers... These, I'm going to do my little hashtag. Whew, that means numbers. These numbers uh, tell 
How many times? How many times? Six was subtracted. Subtracted from 72. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now it says, how did using multiples of the divisor help you? Hmm. Okay. Well, I would say taking multiples, they're like they're larger. Like here we took like that multiple of 10 that made those 10 groups of the six and subtracting those right away made it faster. Uh oh, my page is moving. Come back. Okay, I'm going to go down the bottom. Hey, blue line, where'd you come from? Hey, what are you doing on our page? Sorry, man. You do not have the proper clearance to be here in this section of the video. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Well, then I would suggest that you disappear. Yeah, skedaddle, time to go. Come on, do I have to drag you? Okay, sometimes I have to. Everybody's trying to be famous in these videos, so sometimes I have to drag them off the screen. Okay, please bear with me on this one here. Okay, come on, you're coming with security. Let's go. Come on, line. No, I don't want to go. Yeah, right, huh? Get out of here. Um, oh, he tried to come back, did he? Okay, here, I'll let you stay right here. Stay out of the way. Yeah, I apologize for that little interruption there. But anyways, how did using multiples of divisor help you? Well, like I said, uh, using greater amounts, using greater amounts helped. Let's say helped us, okay? We're doing this together. Helped us. You might want to put me. <laughs> helped us get to the quotient quicker. Get to the to the quotient um, faster. Faster. All right, that's what I would say. Why? Think smarter. Oh, cool. Why should you subtract 10 times 6 and not 9 times 6 or 20 times 6? Mm, great question. Well, 10 times 6 is 60. 9 times 6 is 54. And 20 times 6, well, that's 120. The number that we, our dividend, remember, was 72. Why would that be a problem? Well, looking at this, well, 54 is really, really small compared to 60 going into 72. And 120 would be kind of be too big. So I don't know. I guess I would kind of say is, I don't know, 9 times 6 equals 54 is far less. Okay, then, then the uh, then ten times six, which was the sixty, and the other one's way too big. That would go over the seventy-two, and twenty times six, which equals one hundred twenty, is uh, too large. Too large, and that's why I think this is the better one to use. Now, nothing would stop you from doing eleven groups, right, of six. That might work because you have eleven, and I think with the fifty-four, how that would worked out we ended up with an answer of 12. And so here we have nine. So obviously 54, and if you think of nine times three to get our 12, it would be 27. So it would be nine groups of six. So if we had three more groups, six, you can see this is still gonna give us 672. So I mean, you could make this work. I don't know, that's not that bad. That would just mean the numbers aren't as friendly, though. Look how compatible they are, like with 54 and 18, whereas the 60, the 10s, that nice power of 10 makes it so easy. You can see it. 60, and then you can just see 72. There's like 12 more. I don't know. Get you there to 72. Okay. That's, I don't know. That's how I would answer that one there. I guess this is supposed to be a sentence. I'll put a period. Okay. We're getting to the last part of the video. Make connections. It says, another way to divide by repeated subtraction is to use a number line. Oh my goodness. Yes. Number lines rule. Yes, they do. They rule, my friends. It says, count back by fours from 52 to find 52 divided by four. Oh, okay. See, we're just going to count back by four. Okay, so I'm just going to do some mental math. I'll choose 48 because I'll take two off the 50 and the two off the 50 gives me 48. Take off another four, I'm getting 44. Another four, 40. Huh, that's kind of cool. It's an interesting way to do it. And then another four giving me 36. Minus four is going to give me 32. And in my mind, you may be doing this too. Just think of your times table, right? Because if you have four, four times 12 is actually 48. Four times 11, 44. Four times 10, 40. Okay, so then these are all multiples of four. Okay, that's how we use that word. And my times didn't really look like a times. I'm going to fix that. <gasps> oh, I did such a wonderful job on that. Ooh, although this one looks like an exponent. Ouch. Okay, minus four is going to give me a 28 because we're already down to eight times four, seven times four, six times four, five times four. See, it makes it a little bit easier. Four times four is 16. Uh, four times three is 12. Eight, four, 
Now, the only thing is one, two, three, four. Okay, how many equal groups of four did you subtract? I don't know. I need to count them now, right? One, two, three. Oh, wait. <laughs> I had 12 is 48. So it would be 13, no? Yeah, I hope so. Let me see. Four times 12 is 48, so four more. Yeah, it's 52. So that means we did 13 times. Okay. Because we're actually counting this is one here. Well, any, by the way, we could, I should have done this. Oopsie. Yep, I could have done this from the beginning. Just counted them all up this way, put my little number. Oh, no, you're going the wrong direction, Mr. Wara. Oh, no. Three, two, one. But yes. Yes, okay. At least we have our 13. 52 divided by 4 is equal to 13. Okay. And, you know, if I wanted to, I could do my little algorithm. 13 times 4. This is your basic, basic learning how to multiply, my friends. A two-digit number with a one-digit number. We multiply the ones column here first. The 4 with the 3, which is 12. And I put my 2 down, but I have to carry my 1 over. It's a 10 into the next column. It's going to get added, though. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1. 52. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is another video. Woo! Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. My friends, I can't begin to tell you how glad I am. Come along and you check out these videos. And you share some of this. Oh, probably one of my most favorite things in life. Math. That's right. It's just, I love math. I love numbers. Numbers are my friend. I hope numbers will be your friend too. Now, live long.